what is up gentlemen and welcome back to another episode my name is joey i'm the client success director here at the empowered man and inside the vip thrive program in today's episode you're going to hear a testimonial from john t about his experience as he went through thrive what his big takeaways were and really what the entire experience entailed i'll see you on the inside peace All right, I've got Mr. John Tui with me, who is a former client of our Thrive program and who actually is kind of a neighbor of mine, lives in the uh, the, the Gilbert Phoenix area of uh, Arizona. So it was cool. We got to have lunch a couple weeks back um, after he's been done with the program. And we got talking about, you know, his, his story and what happened. I was like, you know what? I think it'd be great for guys to hear your story specifically every guy's story is unique and yours is no different from that. Um, you know, so I'd love to just jump right in and, and tell us kind of like what you were going through before, um, before you jumped into empowered man, like what was going on? Sure. Yeah. Um, a little difficulty in the marriage and communication and whatnot, but I, I think the big thing was I had seen your information on Facebook I don't even think I was looking for it, but I saw it and I just saw like how passionate you were. And I, I could tell like your heart, you were on fire for helping guys. And so for my story, it was, um, I got served divorce papers. So I started the program in June, right when that happened and I did the 30 day, but before that ended, I went right into the thrive program. Yeah. So what, yeah. what was it that like, obviously like the message tracks a lot of guys, but what for you got you to a place where you're like, you know what, I've got to work on me. Like, what, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, I think, well, yeah, at the beginning, you know, you think about the other person and everything going on and what did they do and what could they do differently? But I think at the end of the day, I, I saw there was a way I could get support. I mean, I, I've been a part of programs before, like ACOA, like, you know, 12 step programs. And I just felt like I needed something. There was something I was missing. So I was missing it. And I felt like this would be a place for support. I think when I was in the program, the 30 day, noticing the, the things that we were doing, I just wanted more and more of it. So that's why I went into thrive as well. I'm like, I need to do more and also do it. I mean, in my mind, I was thinking quicker and faster. But as I went through the program, it's, you have to take it day by day and you have to work the program. Yeah. So tell me like, what were some of your biggest takeaways during, during Thrive? So I think uh, the biggest takeaways were some of the exercises that you did, you really had to, you know, self-reflect and think of yourself and what you were going through and what you did. Uh, so some of the big takeaways, I remember like the last one, like writing a letter like basically sharing your ownership of what you did in the breakdown of the relationship. I mm -hmm. think that was a really big piece. And why was, like, why was that a big piece for you? Like what, what did that mean to you? So, you know, like sometimes you process things verbally or journaling or things of that nature. It was really getting everything out there, like getting my thoughts, my feelings and the ownership. I mean, the ownership was big. So just owning to say, these are things that I did that I could do better. Yeah. So. And when you say it's big, like this is, to me, this is a huge thing, but I don't think a lot of men understand the importance of ownership. Like, why was it big for you? Like, what did it mean to you? Well, there was no scapegoat or blaming. Mm. I just owned what I did. I took responsibility. There's things I work for hard in my life. Right. And I, and I see, I put in the hard effort and I put in the work. This was like getting real with myself to say, there were things that I just need to own up to. I could do better. And it was nobody else's fault. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy about this is because like, and, and obviously knowing a little bit more about your story than most people do, but like, you're one of these upstanding guys, you have a good job, you provide, you didn't cheat, you didn't beat your wife, you're a good dad. So it's like you easily, and I know you did in the beginning, like, why me? Like, what did I do? You know, like I have this beautiful wife, beautiful family. We go to church together. We, we do all these things. And it's like, like what, what happened, you know? And, and so you easily could have just gone down that path and stayed there. Like, like how different do you think your life would have been? Had you done that and just blamed her and got bitter? Like, what do you think your life would have been like? 
Oh yeah. It wouldn't have been good. And I, I had a friend, I remember at the beginning, he was giving me advice. He was getting angry. He was yeah. really getting angry at the situation. He thought like what he would do. He later came back to me and said, look, I really commend what you're doing. Cause he's like, I gave you the wrong advice and I'm glad you didn't take it. So it worked out really well. So. Yeah. And, and that's the saddest thing. And that's, that's one of the main reasons we do what we do. Um, we say all the time that what we do is literally life and death. Like there's men that have actually taken their life. And then there's men that emotionally take their own life in the sense that they just become bitter and, and then they, they, they blame and they live a life of darkness really. And that's, and, and like your children see that and you chose something other, which again, most people in your situation, you could look at your situation and go upstanding guy does well financially, has a great, you know, moral compass, all these things. You didn't deserve this, but you chose to own your shit, which is super important. And I'm, I'm thankful that you humbled yourself when you almost didn't even need to, but you did because you recognized there was more to this than, than that. Yeah. So tell me what life has been like since, because I know things are still kind of getting finalized with your, with your situation, but like, how, how are things not right now in your life? Well, everything's starting to flow. I mean, we just, we sold the family house. I bought a new house. She went into a rental. The kids were in transition for a little period of time, at least on my side, because I had to wait to get in, but now it's flowing. Like the house is together, the rooms are painted. I mean, they're starting to get more structure. And I, I think that's the big piece. Giving to my kids, they really thrive on wanting this structure. And it was just like chaos for a while. Yeah. So things are starting to, I'll say, normalize and and be better for everybody. There's more yeah. of a good. So, yeah. So what are you looking forward to the most? I'm actually just starting counseling. I mean, I've got with other people in my pastor and I've done that, but like, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to bettering myself. Um, I know that I deserve more and I know that I respect myself more, not letting things happen the way they happen and the boundaries and whatnot. So I'm looking forward to eventually meeting somebody, mm -hmm. you know, someone that I can spend time with and enjoy and, you know, that both of us, it's a give and take. Yeah. But I mean, I think the counseling piece this year is going to be a big thing for me to just start taking steps in the right direction and, and really like fully heal. Yeah. You know, that's so. good. Take me back real quick. Like, I think a lot of guys in your situation where again, you know, successful, it looked like success to everyone else. And in your mind, you probably like kept it as like, it's successful. It's fine. Everything's working. You kind of in denial. Right. And then you get served with divorce papers. Like what was the biggest fear you had about divorce? I mean, I didn't know what to expect and what life would be like. So to me, it's always, it's been 17 years together. So I knew us as a family structure. And so I just, it was the unknown, like, what's it going to be like? And other things like, what are my friends going to think? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't make the decision, but yet I was in this marriage and all of a sudden it's not going to be there anymore. Yeah. I mean, we see that a big time, especially people in the faith community where it's like, there's a certain status that comes with being married and like, well, if you're married, you're okay. But if you're single, there's something wrong with you. And especially somebody who's single because they got divorced. Whoa. What did he do? Right. Yeah. That stigma that's attached to it. But it sounds like, it sounds like you have this level of freedom now that's different where it's like mm -hmm. you entered into the gray, the unknown, but like you're, yeah. it's like, you're, it, it seems to me that you've discovered a whole new part of yourself. Like, tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So the other thing too, I'll say is like, even when I went through this, I'll, I'll just start in January. Like I was praying constantly. I felt like this sense of peace. Mm. And as I continue to go through this, and I take the challenges and I actually go and do them. Like I traveled for, I, I worked for an airline. So I traveled for the first time by myself and I literally just picked a flight and left and I went and I did it and it was tough, but I did it. And then I got, it's like getting past other hurdles, you know? And then it's like, I can do this. And then you just keep taking steps. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly why we have the date yourself 
uh, exercise and, and thrive because it's like, it's, mm-hmm. you're so used to being husband, father, we lose our identity in that. And it, and it sounds like for you, that was you also. And now it's like, I see a guy who's not defined by his marital status. He's more defined by this is me. This is John Tui. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? And, and yeah. And then, and then the other thing is, so there's things that you lose in a marriage like you kind of mold together. And sometimes like as a guy, at least speaking for myself, I let some things go. So now it's time to get those things back to say, this is me and this is what I like and what I enjoy. I'm going to go do it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, is there anything you'd like to share with anybody that's watching this that is interested in either joining Thrive or just they're kind of facing this road? Like, what would you tell that guy? Well, the one thing I would say in, you know, in my mind, I know that you all help guys and I've been very supportive in the program and I, and I know that there's a cost to it. And sometimes that's difficult for me. It wasn't a matter of the money. Like I know you guys need to run a business and pay people as well. So for me, it was, this is what I'm willing to spend because it's that important. Hmm. And, and it was, and it paid huge dividends. Yeah. So that's awesome. I would say, don't let the cost stop you. I mean, that's what I would say. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's crazy because we've always even as a business tried to determine what's the, you know, what's the most effective price. And you have to look at things from a profit and loss standpoint, because we are a company, but then at the same time, what we did was we actually lowered our, our cost because we wanted more impact. We wanted more men to have accessible. And we found the price that we're at is kind of the sweet spot where we could get the most amount of men. And obviously there's a lot of men that still can't afford or, or won't be able to afford. And, and that's, you know, that's part of it. But we've also found if a guy really wants to do it, he's going to find a way. We just had a guy the other day, his, he didn't have any money, but he really wanted to do it. He convinced his dad to borrow the money and his dad paid for it on his credit card. He was a younger guy and he didn't have the, the, the money. So, I mean, we, we have that all the time where it's like, if a man really wants transformation and change, he's going to find a way. So. You know, and that's key. You just said it, it, it is transformation. Yeah. It's not, it's not the same person and we put some band-aids on and now the wounds are covered up. No, it's transformation. And, and that's the key. If you work the program and you're really committed to it, you do get transformed. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope uh, guys got some benefit out of this and your story. Um, It was definitely impactful and I'm glad to have been able to meet you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark.